The introduction of the new Terraria 1.4.4 update has completely changed certain aspects of the game. Old weapons now perform in completely different ways to how they did before, which can change the way you play the game entirely. This update was massive, and I'll not be mentioning every small detail that has been added. Believe me, a lot has been added. However, I want to go over what I think are the 5 best or most game-changing additions to come from this update. This update saw a complete revamp of the Terrorblade. This weapon has always been a favourite of mine, and this change is huge. Prior to this update, the Terrorblade and Influx Waver both performed very similarly to each other, and there was almost nothing to distinguish between them, except how they were obtained. The crafting recipe for the Terrorblade is still the same, requiring the True Knight's Edge, True Excalibur, and Broken Hero Sword. However, the way this sword works in-game has been completely changed. First of all, the base damage of the Terrorblade has been decreased from 115 to 85. The projectile that it shoots has been increased in width and frequency, meaning you're more likely to hit your target. The projectile also now pierces through 14 enemies, whereas the old Terrorblade only pierced through 2. This essentially changes how the weapon is used. The new Terrorblade is far better for crowd control, where there are large groups of enemies, and performs worse against individual targets, like bosses. This doesn't mean that it is bad for bosses, however, as it still shreds through every boss due to its speed. The Trimerang is a brand new weapon from the 1.4.4 update, and is a boomerang which releases 3 projectiles when used. Early game melee has always been lacking powerful weapons, and this weapon almost fixes that, except for one flaw. The crafting recipe is ridiculous for what you're actually getting. In order to make the Trimerang, you need to get an Enchanted Boomerang, which is made from a Wooden Boomerang and a Fallen Star, the Ice Boomerang, which is found in ice chests, and the Shroomerang, found in chests in the underground mushroom biome. Despite needing three individual boomerangs to craft it, the Trimerang does less base damage than one of the boomerangs needed to craft it, and does the same damage as the Ice Boomerang overall. This makes it almost pointless to craft, as if you already have the Ice Boomerang, you have a weapon better than the Trimerang. I would only ever suggest crafting this weapon if you're very early game and already have the boomerangs needed to craft it. It's not worth looking for each individual boomerang, as you're going to move on to better weapons very quickly. The High 5 is a pre-hard mode yo-yo that is crafted using beeswax obtained from killing the queen bee. This yo-yo is incredibly powerful for how early you can obtain it. It has a base damage of 24 and can reach up to 14 tiles, which is second best in pre-hard mode, only behind the Cascade. This yo-yo also releases bees when you deal damage to an enemy. These bees are extremely powerful and can be made to deal more damage using the Hive Pack, which is an expert mode only accessory. Despite the Hive 5 having less reach and less duration than the Cascade, I would still recommend using it instead, as the bees are extremely powerful and the Cascade is a 1 in 400 drop chance from enemies in hell, making it very rare. The yo-yo class hasn't seen an update in the last 7 years, so this is a welcome addition. I will definitely be using this in the future. The Knight's Edge was, and still is, the best sword in pre-hard mode. It has always been powerful, however it has been significantly buffed in the 1.4.4 update. The crafting recipe for this weapon is quite demanding, requiring 4 unique swords just to make it. The first sword is the Blade of Grass, which is crafted using stingers, vines, and jungle spores found in the underground jungle. The next sword is the Muramasa, which is found in gold chests in the dungeon after defeating Skeletron. The third sword is either the Light Spain or the Blood Butcherer, which is crafted using bars dropped from the Eye of Cthulhu. The bars you get depend on which evil biome you chose when making your world. If your world is Corruption, you'll get Demonite bars and craft the Light Spain. However, if your world is Crimson, you'll get Crimtain bars and craft the Blood Butcherer. And the final sword is crafted using 20 Hellstone bars, which can be mined in Hell. Once you've obtained all four of these swords, go to a Demon Altar or a Crimson Altar in your underground evil biome, and craft the Knight's Edge. The Knight's Edge has always had the highest base damage of any pre hard mode sword, but was often neglected for stronger weapons prior to the update due to its lack of range and bad crowd control capabilities. However, the 1.4.4 update added a large slashing animation around the sword which deals damage. The sword's range has been significantly increased as well, and the sword now has better coverage as it deals damage behind the player as well as in front. This was a well needed buff to improve this sword and truly make it worth the effort when entering hard mode. The sword is now powerful enough to defeat the first mechanical boss in hard mode, 
which previously would have not been possible. There are already hundreds of potions in Terraria which help the player do things quicker or help improve the player's efficiency during mining, fighting bosses, looting, fishing, and building. However, one difficult issue has always been the spread of the evil biome, either the corruption or the crimson, in your world. The evil biomes spread to regular grass blocks and corrupt them, making your world look ugly and making NPCs not want to live in their housing. There are only a few ways to stop this spread, but these methods are not always foolproof, and often you end up with a few extra corrupt blocks which rapidly spread to your entire base. The new Biome Sight Potion helps fix this by illuminating corrupt blocks and showing the player the areas which need to be purified. This saves the player lots of time and helps your world look a lot nicer. The potion lasts 5 minutes and is relatively easy to craft, requiring 1 water bottle, 1 blink root, moon glow and fire blossom, and 5 grass seeds. So, those were some of my favourite additions to the game from this update. Thank you very much for watching, feel free to leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.